Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another uncanny episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is brought to you in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote in monthly polls and get your name in the special thanks at the end of each episode, you can sign up for as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below. This week's video comes with a disclaimer. I am by no means an expert on world history. However, the origin of the man called Magneto is integrally tied to the events of the Holocaust, a real-life tragedy which claimed the lives of millions of people. While the following story contains many fantastical elements, it also makes reference to real, horrific events, and for that reason, viewer discretion is advised. Our tale begins with a Jewish boy named Max Eisenhardt, who grew up in Nuremberg, Germany in the early 20th century. His father, Jacob, was a German soldier who fought in the First World War. And for his service in 1916, Jacob Eisenhardt was awarded the Iron Cross and declared a proud son of Germany. And proud he remained, even as the winds began to change and the political climate shifted. During Adolf Hitler's rise to power in the early 1930s, Jacob believed that the Nazis would simply be voted out, and that his family could continue to live their lives. He never thought that his own country, the homeland that he'd fought and suffered for, would turn against him. He believed that Nazi rhetoric would be a passing phase and that he and his family would be safe. Jacob Eisenhardt, the proud Jewish son of Germany, was wrong. On September 15th of 1935, the Nazis announced the Nuremberg Laws and Jewish people were no longer considered citizens. It was also made illegal for a Jewish person to marry or have extramarital relations with a German national, something which Jacob's brother Eric had already done. And so Eric Eisenhardt was beaten and publicly shamed for his perceived crime. Meanwhile, Jacob's son, Max, grew up bullied and ostracized for his Jewish heritage and his weaker nature. His only friend was a Romani girl named Magda, with whom he was smitten. And the one sport he excelled at was the javelin throw, which earned him a gold medal. However, he was perhaps too capable of sending the metal spear flying, and was accused of cheating, resulting in his expulsion from school. As time passed, Germany only became more dangerous for Max and his family. In 1938, he watched from his family home as Jewish businesses and synagogues were ransacked and destroyed on the Night of Broken Glass. In 1939, the Eisenharts were expelled from their home and fled to Poland. In September of that same year, the German army invaded and the family escaped to the capital city of Warsaw. And before the end of 1940, they were forced to live in the Warsaw Ghetto along with hundreds of thousands of other Jewish people. By June of 1941, food rations were so low that thousands of them were starving to death every month. Max and his uncle Eric became food smugglers desperate to feed their family. Max also began to grow vengeful and wanted to strike back against his oppressors. However, Eric convinced him that such a thing would only bring even more terrible retaliation against their own people. Regardless, during this time, their people were being rounded up for mass extermination. And so in 1942, Max and his immediate family attempted to escape while Eric stayed behind to fight. But before they made it to safety, the Eisenharts were caught by German soldiers. They were lined up with other captives and gunned down in cold blood. Max's father Jacob, his mother Edie, and his sister Ruthie were all killed in a hail of bullets. And yet, Max survived. The metal projectiles moved unnaturally in mid-air. They grazed and missed him, but through some strange power, none fatally struck him. At the time, Max didn't understand that it was he who made this happen, but the exertion of this caused him to fall unconscious, and he was left in a mass grave. 
He awakened hours later, but the horrors he would experience were far from over. In September of 1942, he was captured and sent to the Auschwitz concentration camp. There, he took the advice of another captive and claimed to be 18. To survive, he made himself useful and worked cleaning out the crematorium furnaces and removing bodies from the gas chambers. This allowed him to escape the notice of a mysterious pale-skinned geneticist who was experimenting on the Jewish prisoners. However, he did witness the results of these experiments conducted by the man who would one day be known as Mr. Sinister. For two years, Max Eisenhart experienced horrors which should be beyond the scope of imagination, but were tragically all too real. He then found that Magda, his beloved childhood friend, had also been sent to Auschwitz because of her Romani heritage. He inspired her and several others to do what they needed to do to stay alive. When she and many other Roma were set to be exterminated, Magda survived by hiding among the corpses of her family. Then, in October of 1944, a group of Sonder Commandos, working prisoners like Max, rebelled and destroyed one of the crematoriums. One report indicates that Max and Magda escaped in the ensuing chaos. Other sources suggest that the two remained there until January of 1945. According to those accounts, with the Second World War coming to an end, the Nazi guards intended on killing the remaining prisoners to cover up their atrocities. Max saved Magda from such a fate by striking her would-be killer from behind, and the two made their escape. In either case, Max and Magda had survived a holocaust that claimed the lives of millions. They escaped to the Carpathian Mountains and settled in a small village where Max found work as a carpenter. They married and had a daughter who they named after Magda's mother, Anya. The family later moved further east to the Ukrainian city of Venitsia. Max continued to work as a builder but was underpaid for his labor by a greedy foreman. Silently angry, Max began to use his latent magnetic powers which he'd unknowingly employed several times before. Without understanding what he was doing, he sent a metal crowbar careening into the door beside the foreman's head. Having frightened his boss into giving him the money he was owed, Max departed, intending on conferring with his wife. However, as he returned home, he found that the inn his family was staying at had caught fire. He rushed inside and, for the first time, consciously summoned his mutant power, forming a magnetic shield around himself and his wife. He pulled Magda outside and intended on rushing back in to help his daughter who was trapped upstairs. But before he could, he was assaulted by officers sent by the foreman. He begged them to let him help her as Anya's final scream echoed and her flaming body fell from the burning building. In a blind rage, Max lashed out with his powers, sending out a powerful energy pulse. This eruption of anger and power killed nearly everyone around him, leaving Max alone with the charred remains of his only child. The only other person untouched by the blast was Magda, and she was terrified. Frightened by what her husband had done, fearing he was some kind of inhuman monster, Magda fled. Some reports indicate that Magda was pregnant during this time, and that she escaped to the Balkan nation of Transia. There, she sought refuge on Mount Wundegor, the headquarters of the High Evolutionary and his race of humanoid animals. She allegedly gave birth to twins, Wanda and Pietro, and disappeared into the mountains in 1958, fearful of what would happen to them if her husband had found her. However, it's more recently been reported that Wanda and Pietro's real mother was a Romani witch named Natalia Maximoff and that instead of being born on Mount Wundegor, the twins were abducted by the High Evolutionary. In either case, the two children were later turned over to Natalia's brother, Django, and his wife, Maria, who raised them as their own. 
As a side note, because of the sliding timeline, Wanda and Pietro's ages wouldn't line up with them being born in 1958, but this was already explained by the High Evolutionary, keeping them in stasis for a time before delivering them to the Maximoffs. Max, meanwhile, began a new life with the help of a master document forger. He crafted a false identity as a Sinti Romani and became known as Eric Magnus Lenscher. He eventually traveled to Israel and did volunteer work at a psychiatric hospital near Haifa. It was there that he first met an American geneticist named Dr. Charles Xavier. The two became friends and shared many lengthy debates about what would happen if a hypothetical race of mutant humans with special powers were to emerge. Xavier argued that normal humans and mutants could surely live in peace, while Magnus insisted that would not be an option as long as humans couldn't even live peacefully with themselves. Of course, Charles was secretly a mutant himself and used his telepathic powers to awaken a woman named Gabrielle Haller from a catatonic state. However, the reason she was in that state in the first place was because in the final days of the war, the Nazis forcefully implanted the location of a secret cache of gold in Gabrielle's mind. And so shortly after she was revived, the hospital was attacked and Haller was abducted by agents of the terrorist group Hydra, the leader of which was the notorious Nazi war criminal Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. Torturing the girl to get the information, Strucker successfully located the Nazi gold. However, Xavier and Magnus teamed up to rescue Haller, revealing their mutant powers to one another in the process. However, Magnus knew that he and Xavier would not see eye to eye on human-mutant relations. Fearing that a war was inevitable, Magnus resolved to prepare and departed with the gold himself. Taking the name Magneto, he spent some of the following years hunting escaped Nazi war criminals. He worked with a covert government agency but earned their ire when he went off script and captured a former Nazi who was working with them. As a result, the agency attempted to have him killed and Magneto decided that humans could not be trusted. He killed his attackers and resolved to lead his mutant brothers and sisters into becoming the dominant race on Earth. He began recruiting mutants to his cause, such as the teleporter Astra, who helped him gather alien technology. With it, he established an orbital base known as Asteroid M floating several miles above the Earth. While Astra did not remain with him for long, another recruit, Mortimer Toynbee, the Toad, did. Despite Magneto's short temper and abuses, Toad remained blindly loyal and worshipped his new master. Another recruit was Jason Wingard, aka Mastermind, a mutant with the power to cast realistic psionic illusions and alter perceptions. Perhaps his most noteworthy followers during this time were a pair of superpowered twins he rescued from an angry mob. The white-haired Quicksilver could think and move with superhuman speed, while his sister, the Scarlet Witch, possessed a seemingly mutant hex power. Of course, these two were also known as Pietro and Wanda Maximoff. After saving them, Magneto brought the twins back to Asteroid M and they were inducted into his Brotherhood of Mutants. Due to unreliable testimony from the bovine nursemaid Bova, Magneto would later come to believe that Wanda and Pietro were his own long-lost children. However, long before that happened, he had another child in an affair with a married woman named Susanna. After her husband, Arnold, found out about her infidelity, the two argued while flying their private plane. Young Lorna, the daughter of Susanna and Magneto, cried as the two yelled at one another and at her. In a display of power much greater than mutants are normally capable of at her age, Lorna lashed out and destroyed the plane, inadvertently killing her mother and stepfather. However, Lorna herself survived the crash, and soon after, Magneto arrived on the scene with Mastermind. 
Her magnetic abilities had manifested much earlier than mutant powers normally do, but Magneto knew the girl wasn't ready to join him, and so instead he had Mastermind use his psionic powers to bury her memories of what had happened that day and suppress her abilities, so that she would have a normal life for a while longer. She was then raised by a couple named the Danes, Arnold's sister and her husband, but eventually grew up and after her latent mutant powers were unlocked, Lorna Dane became known as Polaris. But before that happened, before his group was labeled the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants by the media, Magneto again met with Xavier, and the location of their meeting was the site of the Auschwitz concentration camp. By this time, Xavier had lost the use of his legs in a battle with an alien named Lucifer, but still worked towards peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. Over the years, the two men had kept in contact and kept a close watch on one another. Xavier attempted to convince his old friend to abandon his planned war on humanity, but Magneto refused. He took a handful of dirt from the ground of the old camp, and dropped it on the surface of Asteroid M, swearing not to forget his past. And so when Magneto learned of a German telepath named Whisper who had witnessed the events at Auschwitz and vowed to prevent mutants from suffering the same fate, he sought an alliance. But when he discovered that Whisper was not a Holocaust survivor as he assumed, but rather a former Nazi who sought redemption, Magneto killed him in cold blood. Although he'd already assembled the first incarnation of his brotherhood, Magneto made his public debut alone when he single-handedly attacked the military base at Cape Citadel. It was there that he saw that Xavier had been putting together his own team of mutants to defend humanity and work towards a future where humans and mutants could live in peace. It was there that Magneto first battled the X-Men. Of course, he would encounter them many more times after this, both as an enemy and as an ally, depending on the situation and his own goals at any given time. Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch would turn against him and join the well-known superhero team, the Avengers, and for a time would come to believe that Magneto was their father. And there is, of course, much more that could be said about Magneto and his villainous career which followed these events, so be sure to let me know in the comments below if you'd like a another video exploring those events. But that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me. Including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!